guys and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Wimbledon. If you're still enjoying the series, drop a like on the video. That would be glorious. Uh, if we could get 400, that would be even more glorious. Uh, 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 uh. Anyway, um, over the last sort of month or so, we've had obviously some fixtures, which is what you would have expected. It's been a bit of a mishmash of different stuff. Um, but enjoy them and I'll join you guys in a sec for the Southampton game. Well, there we go, nil nil. We did very well to get a draw here, considering the fact that I thought this was the Capital One Cup game and put out a ridiculously weakened side. Um, so we've done very well to get a draw in the league there, which is going to mess us up a little bit, though. Baltam steps up and scores the penalty. Dagenham and Ribbage nil. Wimbledon won in round Baltam's 13th goal of the season. He may not have won the Ballon d'Or, but he's still cracking on. Bouncing through, Mateus round the corner for Imran. Baltam is in again and it's 2-0 on 17 minutes. Baltam with another goal, his 50th goal for Wimbledon, most of which have been scored in the last year. Neves round it comes for Everton, good save from Lumley. Everton picks it up again, pulls it back across and Mateus puts it in for 3-0. Wimbledon a running riot here in Dagenham and that's what we wanted to see. Baltam again, goes past his man, pulls it back across and it's in from Neves. There we go, 4-0 up after half an hour. Baltam has two goals and an assist. Edgar Neves with his first for quite some time, 4-0. Well, there we go, Dagenham and Rubbish nil, Wimbledon 4, through to the next round of the FA Cup. Baltam, man of the match, because of course he is. Sound his free kick. This has had a Cabrera at the back post, and it is 1-0 to Wimbledon in the Capital One Cup semi-final. Gerardo Cabrera with his first ever goal for Wimbledon. What a moment for it. He does, you know. Fabio's in, and it's 2-0 to Wimbledon here at New Plough Lane. We are looking good for perhaps a League Cup final this year if we can better Liverpool over two legs. That would be awesome. Oh, he has, though. Farmer. Looks long for Fabio. Brings it down, though, brilliantly. In behind for Peter. Peter's got one good touch on him. And a third goal for Wimbledon. Half an hour gone. We're 3-0 up in the Capital One Cup semi-final. I guess accidentally resting players for that League game has done a hell of a job for us. To Farmer. Can he slip it through the channel? Goes out wide for Mankia. We've got a lot of players in the box. One of them is Fabio, and it is 4-0 against Liverpool. Well, that's certainly purging our demons. They've been a bogey team for a while, but not today. Well, there we go. 4-0. We can rest the entire team practically for the second leg and still get through a League Cup final. So we've got that to look forward to, and probably a giraffe onesie to go with it. Can he get the ball across, though? That's the key here. Baltam's in there, and he's scored. There we go. Sunderland 0, Wimbledon 1. Imran Baltam's 15th goal of the season already. He could be definitely on the better his tally from last season. What a player. Chapman's ball in. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. We're doing everything right, but then that. Oh, my Christ. It's one all. We really have to get our mojo back in the league. Oh, I don't believe this. How the hell have we only drawn that 1-1? One, one? That's four straight draws in the league and a lot of games like that. And I just don't know what we're supposed to do at this point. Right, guys, we are back. And uh, yeah, question of the day today is this. Um, have you ever rage quit in the middle of a match on FM and why? I honestly can say I never have. Um, I've never done the whole, I just, you know, accept it and move on. You can have another go next year. I don't think there's ever been a reason for me to do that. But if you have, do let me know. I want to know what the situation was that made you rage quit because that's always interesting to hear. Because I've had some times where if I, I might have thought, oh, I could have, but then I just thought, nah, it's just easier to carry on. Um, so do let me know. And if you have any ideas for a question of the day, drop those in the comments too with the hashtag QOTD. So as you can see, things have got much, much more tight at the top. We've still only lost once but we have now drawn four consecutive league games and it really has ebbed away at our our difference at the top city have won a load of their games in hand and are back up level on points with us so it is going to be a crazy difficult season that was looking very very good at one point and has really faded since then which is a real shame just looking at the fixtures we've seen lately um what was it yeah we had so yeah Liverpool nil nil. That was a lucky result. We were lucky to get nil nil, as you would have seen from the stats. I got confused and thought that was the FA, uh, the Capital One Cup tie. So I put out a ridiculously rotated side, and we got away with a point, which is a shame because we probably could have got a win there if we. Oh, maybe we couldn't have. I don't know. Then we had the FA Cup four nil against Dagenham, comfortable as you like. Then we had the first leg of the Liverpool game, which was the actual one. So I put out a full strength team because where the hell not? And we thumped them four nil, which means we'll be resting players for that second leg, as you would imagine. Um. So yeah, there's that now. What also needs to be noted is that in the next game at Sunderland, oh, I just, I couldn't believe it. We took the lead through Baltown, which was fair enough, did everything right as always, and they got a stupid goal from a corner, and we couldn't do anything about it. We just couldn't get that extra goal. The goals have not dried up lately, but in the league, that's four consecutive draws, and more importantly than that, four, five draws in our last seven. We need to get form back, and today is the day to do that, hopefully. Taking a quick gander at the squad, um, also worth knowing, Baltown did not win the Ballon d'Or, though you might have heard it in the highlights, I think, when he scored a goal. I mentioned it. He didn't. Uh, he actually came third uh, in the Ballon d'Or, despite having more goals, more assists, and a higher rating than the player who actually did win it, which was 32-year-old Mohamed Salah of FC Porto. 
because of course he did um, which was a real shame because he actually had better stats in every single area of the things that in theory mattered he still didn't win it salvi did win world player of the year though because uh, yeah <laughs> and uh was there anything else baltam did win european golden boy though and salvi won it last year so that's nice to see and also of course in the team of the year salvi fabio uh baltam and gal frascoli all made it into the team of the year uh, which is really really cool so they've all got their blue cards as well fabio has 16 baltam has 15 he really is contributing but peter has nine now he got 10 in the whole of last season so i think we'll be getting a bit more out of him this year got some decent number of assists as well 10 assists for Salvi, 9 for Fabio. Everton, despite not playing a great deal, has contributed a huge amount to this team this season, and it's just as bloody well. Average rating overall, both Baltam and Masek are averaging over an 8 now. Last few matches, still Masek, Baltam, both averaging over an 8. It's a shame, because I really feel like we're just going through a little bit of an icky patch um because in those games i did all the stuff i was would have been doing last year i swear i just clicked that i would have been i did all the stuff i would have done last year um with those situations trying to handle them the best i could and we just didn't seem to be able to find the goal which was really really disappointing but just how it is so we're going to go full strength today Achibar Achibar actually missed the last game because he was out drinking the night before i shit you not i find him two weeks wages and that's the second time now so i'm a bit worried about Mohamed Achibar's attitude he's got some attitude never mind that's a terrible pun we're gonna move on from that sorry guys had a slight glitch with the camera there um right so les campbell is always on the uh bench now because of course my assistant puts him there instead of uh mccollum murphy who's moved on which is, is just as bad frankly uh, so that's something we're gonna have to work on who can we put in instead of him it's usually someone like kenneth and he could do with the match fitness if he does get a game but i'm actually going to go with um neves today because he scored a goal in the cup i think and i just want to give him a bit more game time a bit more chance because kevin not kenneth not Kevin, Kenneth, has done okay, but it's just not been the breakout season I was expecting from him, to be honest. Baltam has been the man that's really stood out for me this year. So we're going to go with that. Um, we need to win this game. This is this is an unacceptable one. We cannot lose this one. Or Actually, we can't afford to do anything except win uh, because the way things have gone lately, we definitely need to pick it up. Like the draw against Fulham, the one against Blackburn, the one against... These are all winnable games. Really, really winnable. Uh, okay, two of them are away from home, but... One of the things we prided ourselves on last season was our ability to win against teams that were down there. And we've just seemed to have lost that lately and started dropping points in awkward games. And we can't afford to have that happen this season uh, because that would be really the end of a really good title push. Uh, considering how far we were clear, we need to start extending that gap again and getting some good wins under our belt to build that lead at the top back to where it was again, basically. Peter's in behind. He's got Fabio making the run. That's an awful first touch, but we should be able to get on... Oh, I thought Peter managed to get a good touch in. You'll notice that Nenad Planic is now at Southampton. Um, I've only just noticed that myself, so it made it sound like I knew what I was talking about. Baltam, just square it. Oh, it's a penalty. It has to be. Nenad Planic concedes the penalty. I wonder how much he moved to West, uh, to West Ham, to Southampton for, or is he on loan, maybe? Uh, contracted to Southampton. Oh, let's see. Sorry, we've absolutely mugged Arsenal off there. We sold him to them for 27 million with more fees than that. And a year later, he moves on for six and a half million. Oh, I can't find that. And the fact that he's just conceded a penalty against us too. That could not be more perfect for us right now. Um, Fabio's going to get the chance to take the penalty and give us the lead here, which would be just useful. I think if we could just get one win under our belt in the league, it would get that confidence back in the players. Maybe if we could get it 2 or 3 nil, it would be ideal. Fabio has scored the penalty. Wimbledon won. Southampton nil, and we go back to the top, although we never really weren't at the top. We've been at the top of the league since virtually day one uh, and stayed there. We're going to just up the passing a little bit and sort of see where we go from here. But yeah, Nenad Planich doing Nenad Pl Just Nenad Planich things. There's definitely a sub-tumbler for that somewhere. Um, so... I don't know why we really need to... Oh, yes, look at those red yoga pants. That's what I like to see. And Fabio slips it underneath him, and it's 1-0 to Wimbledon here. And that's what we need, basically, just to get some form back. Uh, oh, hello. Very, very quick here. Salvi, ball in, headed away. If we grab a second goal here, then I'm really... Then I'd be tempted to turn the tempo down a lot, actually. Salvi, on the wrong wing, doesn't care. Peter's... Oh, he's offside. That was the chance. We could have had two. Uh, but we started off strongly. That's what I'm liking to see. I'm liking what I'm seeing. We'll go to half an hour. We'll check the pro zone stats and see where we need to improve. Um, ooh. So yeah, definitely required that slightly longer passing. Southampton have I've actually completed a few crosses. Hmm. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Still better from this right-hand side slightly. I know it looks very even, but it is slightly leaning towards that. Um, now, Southampton's key passes have come from long ranges, but what I might do is get to half-time, and if we don't get a second goal before half-time, then we'll drop and change the tactic up a little bit. Farmer... Oh, I thought he was fouled there. Perrin, watch that ball over the top. You know it's coming. Lefebvre. Watch for the ball over the top. You know they're going to play it. Oh, well done, Sammy Farmer. Plowing through them there. 
Fabio just needs to dink this into the channel for Peter, and he's missed again. Oh, he is a bit hit and miss at times. Mostly miss uh, lately, it would seem. Um, still, things are going okay. We're, we're winning the game, but this is the problem. This is the problem I found against Thunder. We're going to lower the tempo as well. Um, was that we were doing well in games, like creating chances, creating shots, and it would just take that one moment and they would get that goal, and that's what worries me. I feel like we need a second goal here to make sure that we get the win because I don't think... I have a feeling they're going to score a goal. Um, still, they've not really offered that much. But the thing is, when it's 1-0, it's difficult to know how, how long you leave it before you drop deeper. When it's 2-0, you can do it whenever you want. Because if they get one back, then you can switch. Uh, you can sort of analyse the danger. But right now, that did not look like a foul from Andre Wisdom, but whatever. Uh, okay. Sam Farmer's completing... He's actually won 5 out of 5 headers, which is impressive because he is literally 3 feet tall. And Alexander Peter... Oh, God damn it. Now, this is just what we need, isn't it? Perfect. Peter, uh, well, Mateus is coming in. No doubt about that. Uh, or do we try something a little different? I wonder. Put Fabio up there and get Neves in instead. It's just an idea, but it might, maybe we can use that a bit more. I feel like Southampton have changed their system slightly. Salve, go on, get that second goal. We need it so desperately. I, I'll feel a lot more confident if we can get ourselves 2-0 up in this match. At 1-0, you know they're going to get one back. Mankio, back for Farmer. Go on, Sammy. Hit, oh, it's deflected in off of uh, Perrin, I think. And, yep, yeah, it's a Perrin own goal, or Pierren. And it's Wimbledon 2, Southampton 0, and we should... Although we were 2-0 up against Fulham, remember. Um, be good in this one. Mankio drops it back. Sam Farmer actually has a rare attempt at goal. Uh, it's not going in, I don't think, but now it is in the end, and it's 2-0, and that should be game, set, and match. But we need to make sure that we stick it. Right. Now we can afford to do this. We'll just drop slightly deeper, push the tempo down a little bit lower, do that. And we're going to be more disciplined as well to add extra uh, meat to the bone, so to speak. Now, defensively, Cabrera and Zissa have been okay, but this is a little bit lacking fitness. Um, so I might get him off for... No, I won't. Because um, for some reason our bench is a little bit lightweight today, which is silly of me. Uh, this is... Oh, wait, hang on. I've moved into fullback. That's not what I meant to do at all. <laughs> okay. Uh, Salvi's only on a seven at the moment. He's not at the best game. So why not give Everton a run out? Everton has provided us with a lot of goals and assists in a very short space of time. So I figured, why not give him a crack? Baltam's done okay. He's got another assist today. Of course he does. Uh... Sam Farmer's picked up another assist. I think we should be able to see this out now, but that doesn't mean that we aren't going to have to keep an eye on things. Let's just see where we're... I'm, I'm wondering if maybe, because they're a 4-4-2 as well, there might be space be through the middle. Particularly as we've got a player that's dropping deep into this area. Uh, not this area, this area here. And that might just be enough for us to create something. Fabio with the free kick. Cabrera said, oh, hits the post, cleared away, and we nearly had a third goal. It was on the edge of being a goal, but we're looking like we're in control of this one now. But that, again, I've seen so many times us throw things away in these situations that I don't want to take any kind of risks in that one. We've got a two-goal lead now, which should be enough. But then again, we threw a two-goal lead away against Fulham, didn't we? All it takes is a dodgy free kick in a corner or something, or a ball over the top. Neves has not done a lot since he came on, and maybe that was the wrong choice, but I just wanted to give it a try and see whether Fabio up top could make a difference for us today. And maybe it has. Neves, that's a good pass out wide for Mankio. A third goal here would be very, very good for me. Uh, Mankio to Farmer again. Will he finally get his goal? No, he's just going to hold that up. Might be able to find... Oh, that's actually nice football. Round the side for Baltam. Oh, what a save that is from Samu. Baltam nearly grabbed himself another goal. But yeah, we definitely deserve the win here. And I think we're going to get it now, which is good. But this is what we needed to do in those other games. Like we were doing towards the start of the season. Just grinding out 2-0 wins and occasionally doing a bit of a flurry. Uh, but the goals just dried up for a couple of matches. And it sort of cost us... You know, we, fair enough, the draw against Man United, that's fine. But the draws against the likes of Blackburn and Fulham and Sunderland, those ones needed to not be draws, basically. It's a simple fact of the matter, and I don't know what's going on there. But yeah, those ones definitely needed to be wins, or at least a couple of them. Definitely the Blackburn um, one should have been a win. That was a home game. We had to win that. But we're still unbeaten at home this season, which is good. Um, where are we? Yeah, we are. We lost at the... We actually, the only team we've lost to this year is Stoke, of all people, which is interesting, considering they're actually doing quite good this season. Masek, Baltam's in. Oh, he's at the bar. He's... Oh. Mm, so close. Look at that. Masek's completed... 67 key passes, uh, sorry, 67 key passes, 67 passes today, which is great. Masek is in again here, he's all the way through, and he's nearly scored again, but we've certainly picked it up towards the end of this game, and I think doing the little drop deeper approach has definitely helped in this second half to just sort of take us over the line. Masek's on a 9 again, because he's just a monster when it comes to ratings. I don't know what Baltam's on, it'll probably be decent by the end of the game, you'd have to say, but I am worried about Peter though, that does worry me slightly. Uh, what did Baltam get in the end? A 7.6, it's still not the best, but it's not the worst either, and that pushes us clear at the top of the league, and we haven't conceded either. Still, 
Nine goals conceded in our first 21 matches. 37 scored is the second most now, which dropped off on there slightly, is not bad. And we're three points clear at the top of the league, but they do have that game in hand. So it is starting to get a little bit tight, but I feel like if we can just get a good run of fixtures, we can get ourselves away again a little bit. And I think we'll be fine. I still think the league is ours to win this year. We just need to make sure that we get a good run of games under our belt, start getting some more wins, basically, because otherwise it's going to be a little bit dodgy, isn't it? So what have we got next? I think next episode... Yeah, it was five games in there. We'll do the first leg against Monaco, like I said I was going to anyway. So, yeah, we've got a lot bit in there. We've got Leicester away in the league. Then we've got the second leg against Liverpool. Can rest players for that. Then we've got Ipswich away in the FA Cup fourth round. Could probably rest players for that as well. Then Bournemouth away in the Premier League. Winnable. And then Arsenal at home, which will be tough. But I think if we can get the win there suddenly start to th things start to look a lot better for us lots of cup competitions going around that's for sure let's just quickly check the uh stats here and oh please sprained ankle that's not good because it means Mateus is going to be leading the line for us or we'll play Fabio up there and put Van den Heuvel uh or Heuvel in I again I really don't know how to pronounce his name it's a strange one my brain just doesn't like it very much uh, so if you guys have enjoyed this episode please do drop a like on the video you can still see that we've not lost for quite some time still which is always good just too many draws in there yeah so if you have enjoyed it please do drop a like on the video that'd be amazing and if you'd like to even more than that subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in your inbox every single day at seven o'clock and I'll join you guys tomorrow for the first leg of our Champions League I think we can beat Monaco they're beatable over two legs and I think we can go much further in the Champions League this year but that might come at the expense of some league form so we've got to be careful the board don't expect us to win the league but I do I'll see you guys soon thank you so much for watching bye bye